Hey there, welcome back to How to Medicate. In this video, I will answer your most Googled medical questions of 2019. I will cover five of them, so my special top five. The first one will be, what is keto diet? What is ALS disease? What is endometriosis? And then the big winner, how long does wheat stay in your urine? And lastly, how long does the flu last? So, make yourself a drink, relax, and enjoy the video. Before we start though, a little introduction. My name is Raoul, I'm a medical doctor from the Netherlands, and I'm making weekly medical videos to educate myself as well as you. So, don't forget to subscribe if you like the video, and leave a like, of course, for the almighty YouTube algorithm. Now, let's get started. The first question didn't surprise me at all. What is ketogenic diet? Because if you haven't been living under a rock, you have been asking yourself the same question last year. Almost every health and lifestyle YouTuber out there has been making numerous of videos on ketogenic diets. To name a few, Dr. Burke, Dr. Mike, and to go full circle with you, even yours truly, Dr. Raoul. And to answer this question, we first need to take a look at a proper diet. A diet that is known among everyone, from Wall Street millionaires to beggars alike. And this is the diet that, at least in the Netherlands, every doctor would recommend to you. So, what should your daily intake be? 250 grams of vegetables, two portions of fruit, 100 grams of proteins in the form of meat, fish, eggs or nuts, then two or three portions of dairy in the form of cheeses, milk or yogurt, four to five serving spoons of carbohydrates or carbs in the form of rice, potatoes or even breads, and one and a half to two liters water a day. And that's it. And telling you this, I already feel the strong urge to protect carbohydrates or carbs as the dietary world calls them. Because they form an essential part of every diet. Your brains literally can only consume glucose, which is made from carbs. They are not evil and they are not invented by Thanos himself in order to in a weird way make everybody fat and use this to balance the universes. No. They are not necessarily unhealthy, but the question does remain, how much of them do you need to take? And in keto diet, the answer is very, very little. About an apple a day will be sufficient, because keto diet focuses mostly on eating fats and proteins, that's about 70% of your daily calories, and you eat very little carbs. 15% approximately of all your calories will be coming from carbs, in a normal diet, this would be 45-65%, to 65%. so take that into consideration. Therefore, a keto diet typically includes meats, cheeses, fish, nuts, butter, oils, seeds and vegetables. Now, of course, this lack of carbs leads to lower levels of glucose in your blood. So low, in fact, that your cells cannot function on it anymore. And every last bit of glucose that is coming in is rerouted directly to your brain. Because a brain forms the most important organ. It's highly functional, but it can only do so running on the best fuels. Or body's own premium gasoline, you might say. You guessed it, glucose. So all the other cells therefore need a backup plan. They cannot run on glucose anymore. So they're gonna use our fats. They break our fats down in molecules called ketones. And ketones can be used then to generate energy. This whole process is called ketosis. And that's why this diet is called the keto diet. And this brings us to the real question, does it really work? And the answer is yes and no. A lot of research has been done to show that indeed ketogenic diet leads to faster weight loss when compared to more traditional diets. But this difference seems to disappear over time. In addition, according to Dr. Campus from Harvard, who has years of experience in working with patients on ketogenic diet, it's very hard to keep doing it over the long term because it's so restrictive. People also tend to eat too much proteins and poor quality fats from processed foods with very few fruits and vegetables. You can imagine that this could lead to health problems on the long term as well. Therefore, I would recommend you to follow a balanced diet and try to embrace changes that are sustainable for you over the long term. This will contribute most to a happy and healthy life. This brings us to the second question, what is ALS disease? And this question has probably been trending because Stephen Hawking, 
the famous physicist, died from ALS in March of 2018. Or you might have totally missed that, you didn't know who Stephen Hawking was, maybe you didn't care either. But you saw some Ice Bucket Challenge videos back in 2014 and only just now start you thinking, where was all that fuss about? Now then, LS disease stands for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and is also known under the name motor neuron disease. It's a progressive neurological disorder that attacks cells in your brain as well as your spinal cord that normally function in the voluntary muscle movements. LS usually begins with weakness in your arms or legs and later symptoms are difficulties with speaking as well as swallowing, breathing and movement of your muscles in general. Unfortunately, there's no cure yet for LS disease and treatment is aimed at improving the symptoms. This usually comes down at non-invasive ventilation as well as the use of a feeding tube. Both will prolong the life as well as improve quality of life but do not inhibit disease progression. ALS can occur at any age, but usually starts at age 60. And the average survival with ALS from onset up until death is approximately 2-4 to four years. And only about 10% of all patients will survive for more than 10 years when suffering from ALS. And this is what makes it almost a miracle that Stephen Hawking did so for more than 50 years. And lastly, it's important to know that in 90-95% to 95 of all cases, the cause of ALS is unknown. However, genetics as well as environmental factors probably play an important role. So, welcome to question number three. What is endometriosis? And to answer this question, we need to take a closer look at the cell layers of the uterus itself. The uterus contains three layers. The endometrium, the myometrium and the parametrium. The last two form a muscle layer and the outer layer of the uterus. The endometrium forms the inner layer of the uterus and it plays an important role in the monocycle of the uterus itself. It thickens during the menstruational cycle and is also shed during the menstruation itself. It's also the layer in which the embryo settles during pregnancy, after which it plays an important role in forming the placenta. Now in endometriosis, the endometrium tissue is found outside of the uterus most commonly in the ovaries, fallopian tubes and in other tissues close to the uterus itself. These spots of endometriosis also react on the hormonal changes during the menstruational cycle and they also participate in the menstruation itself. This leads to blood and cells being shed during the menstruation into your abdomen. In 70% of all patients this leads to pelvic pain during the menstruation. In 50% of all patients this pain is constantly present. And if living in pain isn't enough, endometriosis might also contribute to infertility among women. Endometriosis itself is unfortunately very common. Around 6 to 10% of all women are affected by it. But most of them only have minor complaints. It can start at any age after the first menstruation, but usually is seen around age 30 to 40. There is no clear cause found for endometriosis, but genetic factors play an important role. So if one of your close relatives has endometriosis, then you have a higher chance on developing it yourself. And again, there's no real cure for this disease. There are some treatments though to alleviate symptoms. The first one is pain medication to reduce the pain you might be experiencing. The second one is hormonal treatment in the form of birth control pills or intrauterine devices. This will inhibit the menstruational cycle as well as menstruation itself this will also prevent the endometriosis from bleeding and causing pain. The last treatment option is surgery, where the endometriosis itself is removed. But this is only done if it can't be managed by the other treatment options. Now our fourth question, everybody's asking for a friend, aren't you? How long does wheat stay in your urine? And you have been sticking through this whole video probably just to hear me tell this one answer. And now I have to hit you with some disappointment because there is not one answer. In fact, it's very hard to precisely predict how long it will take a person to eliminate wheat from their bodies. And this is because this is determined by several factors. These include how much body fat does a person have, how often do they use marijuana, how much of it did they use, and how sensitive is the drug test. Now, first of all, THC, 
tetrahydrocannabinol, which is the psychoactive part of marijuana, is stored in our fat. And the more fat you have, the longer it takes your body to metabolize the weed, which means in fancy words, the longer it takes your body to eliminate it. Secondly, the more you use, the longer you can see it in your blood test. And I couldn't really find a real number here. However, how often you use it is also important. So if you're using marijuana for less than two times a week, it takes your body approximately five days or less to get rid of it. If you're using it three to four times a week, it takes your body five to seven days. And if you use it daily, it takes your body more than 30 days to get rid of all the THC. So that's important. Lastly, if we're looking at the sensitivity of drug tests, you need to know that there are four kinds of drug tests. A blood test can detect THC for the first three to four hours after use. A saliva test can detect it for 24 upwards to 72 hours. Urine tests can detect it for three to 30 days. And the hair test can approximately detect it for 30 to 90 days. So that's a very long time. However, if you cannot remember all that complex stuff and you just want a rule of thumb, then remember, if you're not using weed daily, then for almost everyone, in 30 days, all the weed will be out of their system. If you are using it daily, then it can take upwards to 90 days. So, do with it what you want. And this brings us to the final question. How long does the flu last? Now, first of all, the flu is a viral infection. And after being infected, Within one to four days, you will experience symptoms. Those symptoms can be a fever, sore throat, headache, coughing, a runny nose, muscle ache, and fatigue, or a mixture of some of those symptoms. Later symptoms also might involve nausea, vomiting, flushed skin, nasal congestion, and watery eyes. The flu typically lasts one to two weeks, and you may be infectious for other people one day before your symptom starts, upwards to five days during your symptoms. And that was it. I answered your five most Googled medical questions of 2019. I hope you enjoyed it. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like for the almighty YouTube algorithm. Because hopefully my videos will get bumped to millions of others and I can become a full-time YouTuber answering all your questions all the time. Thank you for watching and as always, see you next time. Bye bye.